Good evening. Uh, at this time, I would like to call to order the REDC May meeting. Everyone should have an agenda in front of them. At this time, are there any additions or corrections that need to be made to the current agenda? That being so, I would ask for a motion to approve as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. All right, hand it over to Gabe with the uh, board minutes. Do we have any additions or corrections to last month's minutes? I have one because I misspoke and the um, Maxwell um, broadcast will be October 11th instead of the 4th. Further discussion? They're all 
also over in the Fresh Start Recovery Center, the Winchester House, and they're offering GED courses. They're helping the girls with that, and they're also doing testing over there. <coughs> so after the program's completed, I know they're going over there too. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion uh, to approve the funding and the amount of twenty-four hundred dollars for the lease of office space of Eastern Indiana Works. Those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed, same sign. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> All right, Lisa. Oh, um, we have the uh, there's a fund at the foundation for uh, the benefit of economic development in the county. And um, a request came in, it was in your packet from Ball State. Um, this is a program that they're putting on to benefit um, teachers throughout the region. <coughs> and this is also in partnership with the Wilson Foundation, and they've helped coordinate this effort. Um, so I was approached not only by Ball State, but also uh, a couple of trustees of the Wilson Foundation looking for um, some possible support for this effort. There are two Randolph County teachers um, scheduled to attend. Two that are available to them. Who are 
Hope the law school for the last chance. But isn't it fun that we don't, I mean, we don't, that's the purpose of this, right? So mm -hmm. we don't, I mean, it's, just, it's been sitting there when the last time we utilized um, it, you know. The last time funds were utilized was 2008. It's been quite a while. So what's this, what's this direct purpose? It's, it's to support, um, well, if you, if you might have known, Russell Sims yeah. had owned the, the foundry and he wanted to create a fund to support um, economic development in the county and economics in general. So um, it was set up, I think the fund was established in 2007 as the foundation. He passed away probably 10 years before we had him. So but, uh, anyway, that's what the purpose of the fund is. There's about $30,000. One of the things that was talked about is comprehending the cause of the Great Depression in 1930. I think that'd be something pretty good for the kids to understand why that happened. And how would it get to the kids? That was one of my primary questions. How would these teachers get it to the kids at Randolph County? I mean, a few will get it, but the large majority will pass right on by. <clears throat> yeah. So how do we get that curriculum throughout the county? I mean, if the county as a whole here is going to fund it, I'm always the one that thinks it's got to get to the county children, all of them. So how, how does that curriculum get to them? It's, it's a question I don't expect you to answer because I don't know if you can, you know. Well, the state standards mandate that every student take U.S. history as their junior year and also economics and political science. I'm, I'm aware of that, but I'm like, yeah, it's, it's these two teachers who go and get this specific training. How will that help all the children around the town? Well, they'll bring it back and teach the ideals or the, the method of capital. I, I think it's got a lot to do with capitalism. Mm -hmm. And I think they'll bring those ideas and new teaching ideas back. <clears throat> I don't discount that. Is there some kind of plan that, that crosses over where students from all schools have the opportunity to listen to the only two teachers in the land? So you'd be more forward if you had five teachers, right? One from each school. Uh, very much so. Yeah. yeah. To yeah, clarify, the county's not being asked to fund it. It's coming yeah. from a grant, yeah. correct? Right. Oh, okay. Private donation. From the we are, though, because the economic development is the authority over that fund. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I just right. want to make sure. But it's not, I mean, it's, it, no one was, no one was oh, looked sure. over. They had the opportunity oh, to, sure. to apply to go. Oh, so I, I, I think that right. first I'm, I'm just, I'm just yeah. clarifying for myself that we're right. not excluding right. other schools. No, right? all the teachers were invited. Right. Uh, for whatever reason. Okay. To have. Do you know what schools these teachers actually? No, I don't. Okay. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Does anybody think fifteen hundred dollars for a one day session is a little expensive? They do leave with twenty textbooks to take back to the classroom. It says the largest expense, I believe, is the textbook. Yeah, that was my first thought when I read it today. I'll, I'll agree with you. I'm like fifteen hundred dollars for a one day conference. And then when she said the books, and I was like, oh, okay, that makes much more sense. But I can tell you, I was going to bring up that do we, concern. Do yeah, people use textbooks? Do they, I mean, <laughs> I use textbooks, and we have tablets. Do, I mean, kids use textbooks because everything is pretty much out on a <coughs> format other than a printed <coughs> book, it seems like. So. I, I would assume there's a way to be a digital copy as well. That would come with it. Well, I sent so many on the cost. I don't know. Any further discussion? Lisa, we have a motion and a second to approve the funding for the two Randolph County teachers in the town of three thousand dollars. So those in favor, say aye. Aye. So those opposed, say aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, okay moving on. on. Uh, I think, I think most, most of us are aware that Rachel will be returning as the executive director. Uh, so we are going to start the process of getting a selection committee formed so we can be proactive to make sure we have the appropriate amount of time uh, to find a replacement for grade. So with that being said, I've already sent the entire board an email. Um, uh, so you should have that uh, in your inbox now. And if you would, uh, just reply to that email and let me know if you have any interest in setting on that selection committee. Um, and then once that committee is formed, we will be able to set deadlines, timetables, um, you know, criteria and what we're looking for um, in the next director. So I think the last time we did the search a few years ago, I think there were around seven people on that committee. So we're probably looking at uh, a similar amount of people again. If I remember correctly, I think there were two people on that committee that were not a part of the board as well at the time. 
at the time. So um, again, at this point, we're just really early uh, in trying to find a replacement, but we need to get that selection committee formed so we can start getting everything done. So again, you should have that email, just reply to me and we'll start compiling that list. Are there any questions or concerns with that? All right. No action needs to be taken on that. Sounds like you've sent the email out, so that's good. Um, before we move on to the uh, updates, um, I'd like to, if he doesn't mind, I'd like to call on Steve James. Could, could, would you care to share the news from Frank Miller Lumber today? Sure. Um, there was a, a miscommunication, so it actually it hasn't gone on in the newswire yet. It'll be available up tomorrow or Thursday, but we just announced a, um, a potential $3.4 million investment in Union City for operations here. We're going to um, actually consolidate our Salem, Indiana facility, um, bring that up here put in a, um, a walnut steamer, <clears throat> upgrade our, one of our boilers, and then potentially add some automation uh, to, the, to the mill up here. So that'll be coming out here in the next day or two. Good news. Good news. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. You need to dry up, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the second thing. But. <laughs> submit the uh, executive director's report in writing. Uh, I only have one thing that I would like to add. Um, the Indiana Economic Development Corporation is providing reimbursement for the trip that was taken to Washington, D.C., as well as when I went to Houston. The one thing, for some reason, they have a crazy rule. They're, they are not reimbursing us for taxi rides, which were Uber rides, paid for by Mayor Conklin. Uh, so the ride from the DC airport to the hotel back, a couple of times back and forth to Capitol and so on, $58.47. I don't know that I need board approval for that, but just to let you know, if you see it on the expenditures of payment to Brian Conklin, um, that's what it is. So um, the, other, the only other thing I would add would be um, the, well, it was about a month and a half ago, Mayor Conklin called me and he said, I have a reporter from the New York Times coming to my office to talk about the um, workhorse assuming the ownership of the Lordstown, Ohio General Motors plant. And you may have heard about some of this when President Trump tweeted, and had happy day, we're going to save jobs in Cleveland and so on. The New York Times did a story on this. Um, savior of GM Lordstown plant. No influence or importance. So uh, it's an interesting story. If anyone wants that, I've got it here. I'll be happy to send it, send you a link to it. But um, it is very uh, hard on workhorse, uh, saying basically this is a company that. Uh, since its inception in um, 2007 has managed to lose $300 million and they're kind of wondering how are these guys going to take over a $900 million major auto production facility and so um, it, it's interesting reading some Union City people are quoted in the story so but you short of that I'll be happy to answer any questions but uh, that's really all I've got. Is there a hidden, is there any agenda in GM buyer of the Lord, that particular transaction? Is, is there anything that we should wonder about? No, well, no, I mean, it doesn't, it clearly, uh, they're saying, they being workhorse, that it does. It is not a part of the project. So, do you know what it is then? A chance that we let No, I think it is there. They are trying to find a, what they view as a assembly plant for electric trucks. Is, is GM involved with them as a partner to help G, them do it? In this story, GM executives is, are quoted as being very um, open to this happening. I uh, can't say they're enthusiastic backers, but they were not saying, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard of. So, so um, with
with with that, um, you know, you shared the news. I think when I took this position, I said, you know, two between two and three years. Hopefully, as I had said in my report, I think it, based on the timeline that the, the the new selection of an executive director will take is an ideal time to do a handoff. You know, we should have our kind of our marching orders from Ball State. We'll know where we need to be as far as our broadband technology. Uh, rather than have me set the agenda, let that new person take those and say, let's move forward. So uh, I, it, I just felt like it was a good time. And I'm not going anywhere, so I'll still be here. And so keep, I'll be happy to let you uh, keep me busy at no charge. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, thank you. Yep, thank you, Greg. Any further questions for Greg? All right, we'll hand over to Missy. Um, in my report, there, I think somebody may ask, it has robotics camps on there. It's one robotics camp. It's just converting from Mac to Windows so Michelle can print my report and send it to you. Sometimes I, I just got it done twice there. Just very quickly, I want to point out, because so many of you in this room assisted and helped with that third grade historical promise field trip. I mean, I could name more. I mean, Paul, Alina, uh, Lisa, it, it goes on and on. And it was a great day, at least for me it was. I had a great time. So we had a 301 kids come through there, and I know people are going. I got a feeling uh, Brody has three little boys, so he thought, oh, we have the 300 kids out here, we're going to roll them through there. But um, Brody helped out, everybody helped out, especially in our office. Michelle, Scotty, Greg really helped me out there. Rain held off, so it went. So the kids went through 16 stations where they had 15 teachers. They brought the paraprofessionals to film their, their little assistance that day. And they went all around the, the courthouse, courthouse square, down to the museum, and a four block house, which is one of the few that's in Winchester that Brody has listed right now, for about two and a half hours. So by the time they got done, they were hungry and ate about 400 hot dogs. And that <laughs> Paul Faddis and his group, uh, they, uh, and Elena, they, they served them all. And uh, I gave you a sheet on this one because I want you to know that um, I tried to do this last spring and it didn't couldn't get funding for it because it wasn't multi-generational. That was the Paul Brothers um, uh, reasoning and I understood that. So I had um, some people on tourism who said, I really like to see this happen. Marla Freewitz was one of them. She's a former elementary principal and she said, somehow can't tourism help with this? So you are going to a transfer. Um, we got a direct for $2,800, but with everybody pitching in and helping out and everything we got done, um, we did it for $857.33. And other than the food, I explained, great, we're going to use these displays over and over again. The kids <coughs> will go around. In fact, the, the museum has them right now, and then they'll be back in the courthouse, something they have planned early in June, I think. So we're going to use those over and over again. Just some historic uh, information about Randolph County. So you will see a transfer. Tourism into the economic development to pay that uh, those expenses because they awarded that grant. But we were $2,000 under budget, so that's good too. Um, just one other thing: there's, there is going to be a robotics camp. It'll be the 10th through the 14th, um, from 1 to 4 at Thoridge Fairgrounds. Fairgrounds. We hired a Ball State University um, Tech Academy, who's going to come in and do that for us, and he comes highly recommended. Then he and he does it anyway. He will return to many of our elementaries. We hope the elementaries will take them on. Um, basically, it's second through sixth grade because some of them are. He will come in and teach for free in your lab, in the school lab. So he continues to do that. Ball State, he has some great work through Ball State that he does that with. So we've already got 27 kids signed up. So we have three extra spots, but um, I think we'll fill those too. So I would entertain any questions if you have. Other than that, we're good. 10th to 14th of June. Mm -hmm. 10th to 14th of June, yeah. At the 4 H Fairgrounds. Thanks for your, all your hard work with the uh, third grade trip. That was, it was good seeing all the kids. Yeah, it was. <coughs> just trying to learn it. Out there. Since then, we got some calls in our office from some second grade teachers who said, I'd love to go to the museum. So we set three. We've had three classes to go to the museum. That's and good. then you saw all the kindergartners. I know Brody saw those, all the kindergartners on the plaza on Friday afternoon because they came to see the plaza and they walked through the courthouse just to get exposed. The teachers heard about the trip and thought, 
will go around that. That's what the mayor's office did, the kindergartners did. And so it's kind of spreading. So if we can feel a part of this community. And so I think that'll be good. All right. Thank you, Ms. Moving on. We'll get into uh, committee reports if, if you have them. Uh, first up is the infrastructure. Well, actually, we did need that Scott is the man. It's not going to be me, mm -hmm. so we, from now on, we'll have Scott in those infrastructure committees. But our, last month, we met right before our meeting. She handed it off to me last <laughs> month. We did not meet this month. Okay. <laughs> I just assume nobody wanted sure. anything or had anything to talk about. Okay. We'll, we'll get together. Thank you. Uh, marketing committee, Jim's not here, so. Yeah, but J Jim did specifically want me to add one thing. And mm -hmm. you know how at the meetings, how he always says, and I'm a committee of one, so if any of you <laughs> want to join. And so he wanted me to specifically thank Alina for joining the marketing committee. <laughs> 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 Well, it, but he did say the moment I heard she was a new member, said I was all over. <laughs> so he he got right on it. He now has a committee of two. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for stepping up to the plate. Uh, Steve uh, submitted the May minutes from the leadership committee. Does that add anything? They were pretty intense. I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. We did, uh, so we did forward to the executive committee uh, an evaluation form. Now, obviously, the executive committee didn't meet tonight, but we forwarded it because we thought it was a suitable uh, form to be using when you do the evaluation of the uh, CEO of the nonprofit. So uh, we're waiting for your response on that. And if you want to see it tweaked in any way, shape, or form, go ahead and send that out. Before you can send that out, actually, that's your. Yeah, I thought there was uh where did you get that from? Our intense research and development. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really uh really went uh, into this uh, at, up to the hill and we uh we dug and we we developed and we we borrowed it. <laughs> <laughs> Look good. Yeah. Thanks for all your hard work uh, with that. Dave, anything with the uh, education committee? Yes, he had a nice summary of our meeting uh, in the her report. So if you have any questions, you can have to direct those to Missy or myself. Okay. Then the uh, remaining three committees uh, did not meet. Uh, we'll move into any other business that comes before the board. Uh, not to put Cheryl on the spot, but in uh, the tourism report they brought up the umbrella mm -hmm. you would you like to talk about sure. that but yeah i'm sure you all saw the paper today and it's been i got interviewed for the radio but i never heard it so um anyway so if you saw the um article in the paper today we are doing a downtown event where um, we are displaying umbrellas i got my first decorated one in the office today awesome class of 1967 or something like that um anyway so businesses organizations anybody can decorate an umbrella we are going to hang them on between the light poles we're going to start on the um, south side of the square hang them between the light poles and depending on how many we get we already have I'd say at this point 140 150 so uh, we'll, we'll start with the south side of the square we get that filled up then we're going to move to the north side of the square the intent is to have them so people when they're driving by can see them or stop and um, get their picture taken with them or whatever and so we've gotten a great turnout anybody that wants to do it your group want to do one that'd be awesome <laughs> our umbrella of the downtown Winchester so anybody can do it it's not just for Winchester businesses it's for anybody we've got um, arts place over here um, we've got some people from Lynn we've got all kinds of um, people wanting to do it so we're excited Them, leave them open because we're afraid if you seal them 
you know, like rubber protectors that they'll get cracked or whatever. So we're going to try to store them all open. You might put a little hole in them because it just might rain. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully by then they'll be done. They'll be up between June 25th and July the 9th. And if you don't know how to paint one, there's hours and hours and hours of video on YouTube. Is there really? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, to decorate I umbrellas. To myself, I would right? love to have time to decorate umbrellas like they do, but we have a person at the Y doing it, and she's like, I'll YouTube it. And she literally is watching. Oh, I mean, she's <laughs> showing me. I mean, very much detail. Yeah. Uh, so oh, there you go. Too. YouTube has everything. How to decorate an umbrella. I do have one thing that I would like to wrap up with, um, and that's to talk about the uh, the wind show in Houston. And I just I just to emphasize that uh, the significance of having someone from your county go to this show. Uh, we were the only one of the counties throughout the country that EDP Renewables, where they have wind or solar farms, where where they had someone there. Um, and I had mentioned that I had an opportunity to meet with the CEO of EDP Renewables. Um, he, as I said, he could not express enough his appreciation for Randolph County, what we're doing, and how that is going to translate into significant investment, continued investment. And uh, I, I think we may very well be one of the first counties in our state to have a major uh, battery storage uh, operation built. So it's a, it's a tremendous thing. And you like to leave one of those conferences with one takeaway. And so this is a story that, the, you, it, you know, truth is funnier than comedy. So one of the breakout sessions was uh, they're having trouble in Indiana as well as around the rest of the country dealing with some of the negative perceptions of wind energy. And so one of the speakers was talking about how do you deal with this? And he said, you know, the, the our adversaries talk about how it kills birds, the flicker effect. And, and you know what flicker effect is when it makes the shadows and said it kills bats. And he goes on and on. He tells you how to deal with this. At the end, any questions? And a lady stands up, clearly is not part of this group. East Coast accent, and she's, my name is so-and-so, and I'm writing a book on the history of wind energy. And it goes back 4,000 years, and on and on. And she goes, but my question is, what does liquor have to do with it? And we all look at her, and we, he goes, the speaker says, well, what do you mean? She goes, well, you said it kills birds, and it kills bats, and then there's the liquor effect. <laughs> yeah, he goes, it's flicker. <laughs> and she, in a room of 200 people, just it's like that Gilda Radner routine. Never mind. <laughs> so anyway, true story, and uh, that's all I have. <laughs> Great. What would a battery storage facility look like? I do not know because uh, the ones that are built now for commercial are in the 1 to 10 megawatt range and this would be significantly bigger than that. So I mean, big as a house, I yeah. don't know. That's a good question. What does it look like? Where do they place them? Where do they place them? Yeah, well, I'm serious. Yeah, we'll yeah, probably it'll be aesthetic. I mean, they can do anything. I would say one would probably be right out where CN lives at the at the substation, but but I don't know near the power source so, or the power distribution. So, any further uh, business bring forward before the board? That being so, we would like to thank uh, the school for hosting us. Yeah. Right, for every day he did. That was great. And uh, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. I have a motion. Second. A motion and a second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same side. <laughs> Thank you.